what's the difference between a PlayStation 5 Pro and a Lamborghini? It's a rhetorical question. For as long as I've been reading video game news, the all-time least interesting headlines to me have always been when a video game adaptation is announced. This doesn't do much for me, but today I don't have a choice. It's all these game studios can talk about. So, today we will be talking about video games turning into TV and movies, transmedia, and what that means for me. We can start with WB Games. So its parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery, had an investor call this week featuring unbeloved CEO David Zaslav just out there live making a bunch of funny excuses for burning hundreds of millions of dollars. And the gaming plan moving forward is so perplexing. We're through some of the worst, and it hasn't been pretty on the gaming business, but we have four games that are really powerful and have a real constituency that love them. And we're gonna focus on those four primarily, he said. By the way, thank you IGN for listening to that whole call and transcribing it so I never had to listen to it. But that sounds kind of exciting. Four powerful games. I wonder what they are. We have four strong and profitable game franchises with loyal global fans. Here we go. Hogwarts Legacy, Mortal Kombat, Game of Thrones, and DC, in particular Batman. We are focusing our development efforts on those core franchises with proven studios to improve our success ratio. That's a crazy little list. It's not four games, it's not four game franchises. DC, DC is Suicide Squad. That upcoming Wonder Woman game is a DC game. So I think that's why he adds in particular Batman is just to say, no, not those. But like Game of Thrones? What are you talking about Game of Thrones? But really the point is they've lost so much money on games released this year that are clearly already based off of WB franchises that they're going to laser focus in on only the hits. But if you look at those four again, they're transmedia, right? They're all they're they're four, I won't call them mega franchises. In fact, they're big bang theory tier franchises. By which I just mean broadly nerdy, popularly nerdy. Something you would expect a big bang theory boy to make a joke about and an audience to laugh at. Like Sheldon, in the immortal words of Scorpion, get over here. <laughs> So let's talk about Sega for a second. Sega was in the news this week because an executive maybe accidentally confirmed the existence of a Virtua Fighter sequel. Virtua Fighter, obviously not Big Bang Theory tier, but I was reading the actual interview that those headlines were sourced from, from VGC. They talked to Sega's Justin Scarpone. Executive Vice President, Head of Global Transmedia Group. And I was glad I read that. What's interesting about reading this interview is you get the perspective of someone who was hired just six months ago into a position that I don't believe existed before he got there. And the strange thing is, you almost get the impression that this guy gets it. He says things like, we need to be a little less careful and a little bit more creatively ambitious. Yeah, heck yeah. When he was asked if Sega is working on some sort of Sega cinematic universe, he replies, putting like a dragon with angry birds? The question would be, why? He basically says, I don't know, they could they could overlap in a game like Disney Tsum Tsum, but otherwise, no. He used the phrase super serve, which I wasn't familiar with before. You gotta super serve the fan base, which by the way, I wanna do to you. I hope at the end of a video, you cross your arms and say, dang, he really super served on this one. But yeah, I don't know. I just like how businessy this interview was. Mostly, obviously, just focused on Sega's transmedia focus. Games, 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 games first. Obviously games, but also movies, TV, concerts, merchandise. The things you need to take you from actually nerdy all the way up to Big Bang Theory nerdy. This image Sega made is Justin Scarpone's job. There's gotta be something we can do with Afterburner. And while we're on the subject of corporate visual aids, Nintendo had an interesting presentation this week to accompany its quarterly financial results. It's probably the most important slide right there. That's the biggest headline. I was indeed right about something about Nintendo for once. The Switch 2 is going to be backwards compatible. 
don't worry about it. It's strange, it was basically the Switch's last hurrah as a financial report. They did have some interesting graphs. I got to show you just one, one real quick. Kirby's got 15.08 million units, but they made him the smallest bar. No, this makes me mad. Last gen Kirby is selling better than current gen Metroid, and somebody wanted to obfuscate that. But relevant to today's discussion, there was this one part of the presentation. Expanding the Nintendo IP fan base and strengthening relationship with consumers. Which to me, yes, confirms last week's theory about why they're trying to get Princess Zelda to coax you out of slumber every morning. Wake up, Link. But look at this slide for visual content. Here's a movie that grossed over a billion dollars. Here's its sequel coming out in a year and a half. And we got a live action Zelda happening at some point. And to set things straight, that's not something I photoshopped for you. That's an actual slide in Nintendo's presentation. But if we scroll down, here's the important thing that overlaps with Sega. They say, in the field of visual content, by the way, when they say visual content, they really are only meaning TV and movies. Th that's not normal. I think that's just a Nintendo thing. We are making direct investments and are deeply involved in the planning and development of multiple productions. And yeah, I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure we can still call it a trend. I don't know if we can say video game adaptations are on the rise or if just a few things got lucky, but this does seem to be the big difference. It does seem like Hollywood productions and studios do recognize that there is value in bringing in the IP holders to improve the product and collaborate together. Yeah, sometimes you will have a Randy Pitchford sweatily badgering the crew on your live set. But for the most part, it does seem to be the difference between the wildly successful adaptations we're seeing today and, you know, the Monster Hunters. So what, are we like Guardians of the Galaxy now? When Kojima Productions and A24 announced that they were working on a Death Stranding film adaptation, Look at all the people who showed up for the photo. It's probably the right play, though. It's a strong play. Death Stranding might not be Big Bang Theory level popular yet, but Hideo Kojima is. They could, they could, they could, they could, they could be like, Leonard. <laughs> Fuck. Just last week, Variety had an interview with the two Sony Interactive Entertainment CEOs, Hideaki Nishino and Herman Hulst. Given that it was Variety, they are mostly talking about their transmedia efforts. And listen to Hulst here, he almost sounds the same as Nintendo. The Last of Us HBO series has been a game changer in terms of the credibility of adaptations from games to television series. We learned a lot from that. We learned that it's really important to involve the original creators to ensure that your experience remains very authentic. Which is such a strange phrase. You're not sure he actually understands why The Last of Us was critically praised. But it's later on in this same long-winded answer where I really begin to question their new process. It says we're actually looking to build from the ground up as we tried to do originally with Horizon in creating this world and creating this storyline. And how can you tell stories in this world on various mediums? And so we're setting up franchise teams and portfolio management teams to work with teams to do that properly and find different ways to tell stories in the worlds that we're creating. So imagine you are developing a video game and then you have to have this meeting where somebody asks, Okay, and how does this work for an Amazon series? What's our hook? So going back to that VGC interview with Sega, I found this one question pretty interesting. They asked, do you look for any particular qualities when you're choosing which classic legacy IPs you're going to revive? And Scarpone said, I had the same question when I joined it, and I even asked it to Sega America and Europe CEO Shuji. And what I found, and he was very ardent about this point, and I think he's absolutely right, is that the IP we're focusing on is coming out of the passion of our creative teams. That's both internally and in certain instances on the film side. We've had screenwriters come to us and say, I grew up on Shinobi, I've got a great story, and I want to iterate with your producers. People have a passion for a particular IP. 
And I think that's pretty cool. It runs contradictory to my general understanding of how Hollywood works, where a rights holder would generally just take meetings for a particular project they're interested in producing. So they're like, we're doing Monopoly. Let's hear Monopoly pitches all day long. Give me your Monopoly pitches. Here it sounds like Sega, even with their video game developers, they're just like, whatever, like, if you're passionate about it, we'll hear you out. And that's how you get things like Eternal Champions getting re-registered. That's so crazy. Basically what I'm saying, we're still early in the transmedia boom, but I'm saying I trust this person I've never heard of before, Justin Scarpone, more than I do Herman Holst, to produce Big Bang Theory level visual content. You got this, Justin. Anyway, that's delayed input for this week. I'll be back next week. Thanks for watching. So there's actually some new news for Death Stranding this week for two reasons. One, through some sort of undisclosed deal with Sony, Kojima Productions now has full ownership of the Death Stranding IP. And secondly, Death Stranding would become immediately available on Xbox and Amazon Luna. Now what's interesting about this is that there is a phrase for when a video game becomes immediately available, Shadow Drop. I mean, Xbox uses Shadow Drop. However, as I looked through some gaming headlines, I saw a competing phrase from IGN. Death Stranding surprise launches on Xbox Series X and S. From The Verge, Death Stranding gets a surprise launch on Xbox. From Kotaku, Hideo Kojima has surprise launched the game. Games Radar, Death Stranding just got a surprise launch. Polygon, not you too. Death Stranding gets surprise Xbox release. Let's scroll down. The game studio helmed by Hideo Kojima shadow dropped Death Stranding. There we go. How about Vice? Death Stranding Director's Cut walks the walk onto Xbox. Best headline so far. Randomly shadow dropping on a Thursday morning. If you want to say shadow drop, you keep it in the subheader or the body of your article. Do not put that in a headline. It would be inappropriate. Gotta say, I do kind of like Death Stranding unexpectedly hits Xbox Series X and S. Tell <laughs>